Hello there and welcome to my video. As you can see, these are little zipper pouches. This was made with a size 5 zipper and I used holographic thread for it and I didn't put any tabs on each side. This one here is made with a size 3 zipper. It has tabs on both sides and just made with some regular vinyl. This is my Cricut homepage. The project isn't here right now, but it will be when you are watching this video because these are all pre-recorded. So we're on day nine. So this is what we're going to be sewing on day nine of using your Cricut Maker. And it's sewing a small accessory pouch. This is my name right here. Gives you a description of everything that you're going to need. And don't forget that each Cricut Maker is totally different. So always do a test run before making any project um, using the Cricut. So now we are going to press make it and it's going to load everything up. Make sure that you have your Cricut Maker on because it will not connect otherwise. I'm going to click on the mat and 12 by 12 and confirm. This will bring up all of the different things you, you, we are going to be cutting. And I will go through these as we are cutting. I'm going to take this opportunity to advertise my YouTube channel and if you type Florida Creation into your search engine, that will bring up my videos. And then you can click on this little face here and it will bring you up to my channel here. Then you can subscribe. It'll be up here somewhere, subscribe, and you can click on the bell so you get my notifications every time that I upload a video. I have 543 sewing and quilting tutorials, and there is something there for absolutely everyone. So please do subscribe. Okay, we're going to take the first cut, and the first cut is the external section of fabric. Um, this does not have any stabilizer on it, and we're just going to cut this out. So if you press continue, and then once your Cricut Maker has linked up to the software, Not sure why it's taking so long right now. There you go. So basically, um, you need to set the base material. So we have no bonding on it. So it's going to be basically this button. In order to find these settings, you can go up here and you could type cotton. And then I have these two bookmarks. I use these all the time. This is just a cotton one. This is the one that's bonded. And you've click on these and it highlights them to be bookmarks. So I have done that already. So I'm going to click on the fabric. Then I'm going to apply more pressure. And then we already have the rotary blade attached. So we'll go ahead and cut that. So the next screen is going to take us to the second cut. And the second cut is for the tabs on either side of your pouch so we're already doing the more pressure and the rotary blade so go ahead and cut this this does not have any stabilizer on it either okay so we're going to come to the third mat here this is the one i recommend that you stabilize with that heavy woven interfacing now it's not the fluffy stuff it's the stuff that actually has cotton on one side and a glue on the other side and this is one that you want to stabilize um you can do it you can go ahead and do it afterwards or you could do it now so if you are to do it now you're going to apply the fabric medium bonded we're not going to mirror we're going to apply more pressure i'm going to change this this tool here because i'm not convinced that this is the right one rotary blade and apply and here we go you're ready to cut now we're at cut four these are all the binding pieces and you can move some of these about so if you you could have it going all the way across like that or you could move it like this all of these little sections it's totally up to you i'll leave it up to you this is also just a fabric cut so we're going to change this again we're going to change it to fabric we're going to apply more pressure and make sure that the rotary cutter is on and then we're going to go ahead and cut again 
So we are now at cut number five, which is the cut for the vinyl, the iron vinyl, which is for the external section of our pouch. So if you don't have everyday iron on already selected as a favorite, just go to browse all materials, go to categories here, press on the iron on, and right here is everyday iron on. I already have it bookmarked. You might want to do that yourself. And then you click done. Oh. Here we go. We're going to click X at the top because I've already got it selected. So every day iron on, then I'm going to do more pressure and we'll leave the fine point blade in and we are going to cut. This is the heat press and we need to reset it to 315 degrees. I'm going to press the temperature so it'll flash and I'm going to mark it down to 315 degrees. And then we're going to let it set. It's going to put this on red because it needs to heat up to the 300 or it needs to cool down to 315 degrees so we're going to let it do that and it will beep once it's done so i'm going to lift this up really gently and i'm going to show you that this is all a flat plate and there's absolutely no holes in it so it gives a full even pressing throughout your whole fabric and obviously it's bigger than your regular iron so you can get a lot more pressed so i'm going to let that do its thing so it's beeped and it's ready to go. I'm just going to lift this up. Don't worry, it is on a mat underneath here. It's got a pl plastic mat under there. So I'm going to take our external piece of fabric. This is the one that does not have any interfacing on. It's just a plain piece of fabric. And it wants us to press this for five seconds. So that is what we're going to do. Press the green button. Hold down firmly. And that was five seconds. After we've done that for five seconds, it now wants us to do it for 30 seconds. So I'm going to change that now. And also I'm going to take my piece of vinyl here and I'm going to line it up. So it's going to be a little bit shorter and that's fine than what the actual fabric piece is so we get that nicely lined up we're going to take our Cricut press again and we're going to place that over the top and we're going to press start give a nice firm pressure and do that for the 30 seconds now i've pressed that on and it's very hot so now what you have to do is you have to let that cool down so we're going to let that cool down and run through all the parts that you should have now. Here are parts as follows. One and a half inches wide by seven, five and three. So you should have four, two, two. And also the internal section should have the woven stabilizer on it. And then the external is going to have your design on it. So this is cooled down. Let's take this off. peels off just nicely if you know why I chose these colors leave that in the comment box down below so now let's get sewing we are going to take our stabilized section of fabric and have stabilizer facing towards us and we are going to have the printed side of the fabric facing up so it's basically wrong sides out on both of these so what we're going to do now is you're going to go to your sewing machine and in between all these vinyl sections i am going to take a straight stitch not every single one of them i'm going to do this one miss one this one miss one this one miss one and i'm going to do that all the way through before we start if you see any excess here just cut that off and this is all the stitching in place now you're going to take your piece of binding and i really don't want you to shy away from this because it's super super easy you are going to clip this into place 
on the external side of the fabric. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to clip these. You're going to sew your quarter of an inch. Now you're going to have some wonder clips nearby. So we're going to fold this one up, flip it over, fold this in half, just going to finger press that in place and then fold it over again and then clip. Then we're going to do that to the other side. So you're going to press this up, flip over, fold this in half because you want to hide the raw seam. You don't want the raw seam showing. And then fold this over. And then just clip into place. See? Easy peasy. For this project, I'm going to use a number three zipper. On the Cricut page, I do say about using a number five zipper. I am just going to go ahead and use a number three. Now, as you can see, I'm taking off the end of the zipper and I'm pulling the pull all the way off. The reason I'm showing two is because I'm going to use an alternate colour as my pull. Pulls are easy to put back on. You will put the pull on one side like so and then you will push this next one all the way down as far down as it possibly can go and then on a flat surface you are just going to hold these sections down and pull that zipper up and then you'll have a different coloured zipper on your pull. Right now don't put the pull on, you are going to lie your external piece facing up and you're going to have the teeth showing. Once gripped into place with them teeth facing up, it's really important, you're going to stick you're going to stitch this into place. What we're going to do right now is meet these two in the middle like so. And in order to get that middle center, you can fold it in half and then mark the bottom here. So I'm going to line these up to that central marking and then I have a wonder clip handy and I'm just going to grip that into place. It just helps it to stop moving. I'm going to do the same with the other side. You're going to take that pull and you are going to put it back on. So now it's fully closed at both sides. I'm going to take these wonder clips off and I'm going to turn the pouch inside out. You're going to line that centre mark up with the centre of your zipper. Trim the zipper off. And right now I've just decided I'm going to add pulls on the end of my pouch. When I did this one, I didn't add any pulls and it's kind of hard because you, you're having to press the pouch in like this and it kind of like shapes it a little bit. So I want to add some tabs onto the end. So these are the three inches by four inch sections. I've done this out of the external fabric and it doesn't have any stabilizer on it. So I'm gonna fold it over so it's four inch long that way. And that creates a crease in the middle of our fabric. And then we take the other sections and we fold them in to the center 
of that line and then once again we fold all of them pieces on top of each other so all the raw seams are hiding within each other then you take it over to the sewing machine and you sew down each side do the same for the other one you're going to take your tabs and you're going to fold it in half and then it depends how long you want it to be it's completely up to you i'm going to put the tab inside so it goes in between the two external sections and then you can stick it into place with a wonder clip and then hold the other side and then however long you left this one out you'll want to keep that the same length so mine is about an inch sticking out i'm going to fold this over and we are going to push this into here and make sure that we've got about an inch sticking out just so it's kind of even on both sides and then you're going to put that into place with a wonder clip now you're going to stitch a scant quarter which is barely a quarter all the way down holding both sides together so now we're going to take our five inch binding strips and we're going to place them on each end just like this and then once again you're going to sew a quarter of an inch down cut all the square sections out so what you're going to do is you're going to open these two corner sections out and you are going to lay them flat get a wonder clip and you are going to sew this into place So I'm going to take one of my binding pieces and I've clipped it on and I'm going to do the same thing as what we did just before. And I'm going to put this one on. I'm going to stitch into, the, into place this binding. So we are going to lift this binding up. This is supposed to be overhanging and this is supposed to be turned over. You're going to turn both of these sections in. And then you'll do exactly the same thing as what we did before. You're going to fold this over and then fold this over again. And then you're going to stitch it into place and you're going to do that all the way through. So that really isn't that hard, is it? And now we have the grand reveal. I love this part. So we can turn this right side out and see what it looks like. If you've enjoyed making this tutorial with me, please would you like and comment down below. I love people who comment, I reply back. Hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.